Assalamualaikum everyone. So our next chapter in part 3 is the rules for root locker sketching. So basically I will explain the fundamental rules that needed to be considered in sketching the root lockers. Okay, so there are a few rules. So I will touch about seven rules in sketching the root lockers. Okay, so let's see the first rules. Okay, so the first rule is the number of branches must equal to the number of poles. So we can determine the number of branches by looking at the number of poles. For example, so this is the first example that we can see. This is the first. There are only one poles in this system. So it will determine only one branch where the pole is at minus 2 here. So there are only one branch. Same as this example, we can see that there are one poles and one zero. So one pulse is will determine the one, one branch. So the rules number two is the rule locus will always symmetric with respect to the real axis. So in this case, we cannot see the pattern of mirror image of this root locus because there are only one pulse here. The same goes to this example. We will see more later after this. And rule number three, the real axis segments are to the left of an odd number of real axis finite poles or zero. So this is mean that the first pole will segment to the left. We can see here, these poles will go towards the left. The same as this example. The poles will move toward the left. Now, let's see if we have three poles. For example, okay, say minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3. So, this is the odd number of poles. So, this odd number will move towards the left. Okay, so, now let's see the rules number 4. The root locus will begin at poles and will end at zeros. Okay, now let's see this example. So, it will start, the root locus will start at poles where the pole is at minus 2. And it will end, in this case, it will end at infinity, infinite zero. Well, this example... It will start at pulse minus 2 and it will end at 0 minus 5. Okay. So next, let's see the rules number 5. So real axis and angle of asymptote. So root locus will in a intercept at the real axis and the angle of asymptote. So asymptote is mean a straight line that close to the estimation value. So we will use this centroid of the asymptote and this is the angle of the asymptote. So, this is determine the total sum of poles and this is the zeros. Divide by number of finite poles minus number of finite zeros. Okay. So, this is, I think, uh, wrong. Okay, now let's see the example. So, let's see how to find the centroid of this example. Now let's see the centroid of asymptote. So we have here two poles that is minus 1 and minus 3. 
to around 0 in this example. So, the asymptote is equal to number of uh, number of sum of the final poles that is minus 1, minus 3, divided by number of final poles that is 2. No zeros in this case. So, then minus 4 over 2 or the central was, will be at minus 2 as this example. Now what about the angle? So angle is equal to 2m plus 1 times with pi or 180 degree divided by number of finite poles that is 2. So let's m equal to 0 we will get the angle pi over 2 or 90 degree as shown in this example and therefore the point of asymptote or real axis intercept is at minus 2 with the angle of 90 degree so this locus will travel to this point and this intercept at this point and will be converged into 90 degree okay now let's see the second example so we have what is the real axis intercept or centroid of the asymptote so the centroid of asymptote is number of sum of the poles minus 1, minus 2, and plus minus 3. There are optional zeros and divide by number of poles that is 3. So we will get the answer as minus 6 over 3 or minus 2. So the point of the asymptote is at minus 2 as shown in here. It is also the same point of one of the poles. Now let's count or let's calculate of the angle. So 2m plus 1 times with pi divided by number of finite pole that is 3. So now let's say m equal to 0. So we will get the degree is pi over 3 or it is equal to 60 degree. Now let's say m is equal to 1. So we will get the angle of pi or it is equal to 180 degree. Let's say m equal to 2 because we have three poles. So we we'll have to let the m equal to 0, 1, and 2. Finally, you will get 5 pi over 3, which is equal to 300 degree, or it is equal to minus 60 degree. So in this asymptote, we will get the point of real axis intercept at minus 2 with the degree of asymptote line 60 or stated here and minus 60 degree and 180 degree. Okay, so now let's see rows number. Six. This is the real axis breakaway point and break-in point. Okay, please bear in mind that the real axis, which is we learn in the rule number five, is not equal to the breakaway point. Okay, so this is the point where the root locus. Uh, uh, travel from real axis point to the 
complex point. The break-in point is where the point of root locus travel from complex form into the real axis point. Okay, so let's see this example. Okay, in this case, there are co coincidentally same point as the asymptote or centroid point. So more calculation will search in the example. Okay, the same goes here. So we have the break away point at minus 1.423. It is not equal to the asymptote or centroid of the asymptote. Okay, so the example I will show you in the next video. Okay, so rule number 7 is the imaginary axis crossing. So imaginary axis crossing is the point that separates between the unstable condition and stable condition of the system. So this is the imaginary axis. So the root locus will travel across this point so that the conditions will change. For example, from unstable to stable. Okay. In this case, the condition will change from stable to unstable. So we will see the next video with some example on this rule it's number 7. Okay, so now what else is the root locus telling us? Okay, so the gain K is the product of distance to the poles. So the distance of the poles can be determine the gain of the system. So we can find the gain by calculate the distance from the poles into uh, the dominance poles here. So the zeros are pulling the root locus. So because of the rule number 4, that we will start at poles and end at zeros. So by adding a zeros will make the response is faster and stable. It's shown in the example here. So we add the zeros in this case will make the system more faster and stable. Same goes to this example. Okay, so the summary of root locus in sketching uh, the root locus. So the rules are number one, number of branch must equal to number of poles. Root locus must symmetrical about the real axis. Number three, root locus of the real axis segment to the left of an odd number of real axis in finite poles or zero. Rule number four is the root locus will begin at poles and will end at zeros. Rule number five, we need to find the asymptotes where the real axis will intercept at a point with some angles. Rule number six, real axis break in and break away point. And rule, the last rule is rule number seven where the imaginary axis is crossing which will determine the system stability. Okay, so you can try to sketch the root locus for in this practice one.